votes on which teams I think are winning and why. So, first up this week, we've got a Thursday night football matchup between the 5-1 Minnesota Vikings and the 2-4 Los Angeles Rams. Now, this one, I do think I'm going to keep it pretty quick because I have a good feeling that the Minnesota Vikings are going to win this game. Uh, on both sides of the ball, the Vikings this year have just been quite impressive, uh, to my surprise, to many surprise, uh, suffering their first loss last week against the Lions out of their bye. They still had a very impressive game. They put up 29 points, only lost because they failed to convert on a two-point attempt, losing by just two points. The Rams, on the other hand, it's been a disappointing season. Obviously, your first game, you lose Puka Nakua. Second game, you lose Cooper Cup. going to be hard to get that offense going. Even though Kyron Williams has scored a touchdown every single week, they've just been lacking offensive depth uh, in the wide receiver core. They, their offense is one-dimensional. They don't even often get that many rushing yards. They just get the touchdown. And so the Rams have only been able to score 20 plus points once this year, and that was against the 49ers. I don't think that they had the capability to take down this Vikings team that is just playing so well, both offensively and defensively, slipping up a couple times here and there. But they've also dismantled a couple good offenses like the 49ers, uh, like the Texans and things like that. So I'm going to go with the Vikings on Thursday night. After that, we move into an AFC North matchup on Sunday morning. This is going to be between the 5-2 and two Baltimore Ravens against the 1-6 and six Cleveland Browns. Now, I'm going to go with the Ravens in this matchup. They are the hottest team in football, having won their last five games straight. Almost every week, they're putting up 200-plus rushing yards. Uh, Lamar Jackson is playing at an elite level. Last week, having five incompletions and five touchdowns, something that he has done multiple times in his career. And, yeah, the Ravens' offense is just rolling in every which way. The Browns' offense is doing the exact opposite. Deshaun Watson out for the year. We're going to have Jameis Winston starting for this Browns team that is still yet to put up 20 points in any game this year. Uh, and so, for that reason alone, the Browns, even though their defense is still semi-solid, their offense is just so lackluster. And the Ravens, on the other hand, defensively doing a decent job and offensively absolutely smashing it out of the park. So, gonna go with the Ravens on Sunday. After that, we've got a matchup between the Tennessee Titans, who are 1-5, and, and the Detroit Lions, who are 5-1. and one. Speaking of red-hot offenses, the Detroit Lions have been torching other teams' defenses as of late. They uh, did a number on the Cowboys, on the Seahawks, uh, they just handed the Vikings their first loss on the year. Lions are doing crazy things out there uh, offensively, getting some accolades I've never even heard of. And they do lose Jamison Williams for the next two games. But against a team like the Tennessee Titans, I honestly don't think that's that bad of a loss. Uh, the Titans last week off to an impressive start with Mason Rudolph filling in. Uh, but the Bills still got the best of them in the second half. And really speaking, I don't see how the Titans are going to win this game. They uh, they played one good half of defense, and then they completely fell apart, allowing 27 second half points. They also just... They, they traded away DeAndre Hopkins. They lose... So, sorry about that. <laughs> I have shoes underneath me, and I didn't realize I was moving them in a way that would squeak. So, pardon my feet. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the Titans trading away D Hop, that just makes their offense a little less scary, and it already wasn't scary. Whether you have Mason Rudolph or Will Levis in at quarterback, I don't fear your passing game, and the rushing game is just alright with Tony Ballard. So, uh, in every which way, I prefer the Lions over the Titans, so I'm sticking with them. After that, we've got a matchup between the 3-4 and four Arizona Cardinals against the 2-4 and four Miami Dolphins. Now, this one is interesting. We've got Tua Tungavailoa activated off of injured reserve after his week 2 concussion. Sorry, my, my uh, bumbling 
roommates, they try their best to ruin my audio each and every week, but I forgive them, you know. Uh, Arizona Cardinals and Dolphins, yeah, Tua is getting activated off of IR after that concussion. Obviously a very scary injury for him, just considering the fact that he has suffered so many of these in his young career, and a lot of people calling on him to retire, but he said, no, I am not retiring. People asked him if he was going to wear the Guardian cap, he said, no, personal choice, but I'm not going to be doing that either. And so, we've got Tua back, and maybe this Miami offense gets back to the way that it was looking in week one. Now, before Tua even went down in week two, it was a bit of a mess against the Bills. Didn't look that great. The Cardinals, on the other hand, an up and down season for them. Some weeks they look great, like against the Rams, against the 49ers, they come back. Last week, I was honestly more impressed with their defense than their offense. Offensively, just okay, middle of the back. But defensively, completely shut down the running game for the Chargers, which is really what they try to do, and they force them to pass it. They did allow 350 passing yards, but they didn't allow a single touchdown. So, with the Cardinals' defense looking good last week, and Miami not having their guy for the last six weeks, I don't see how I could really pick them to win right off the bat like that. I do think that their offense should be better, but Tua might be a little more hesitant. Oh, you're going to have to spend a lot more time protecting him in the pocket. It's just, uh, yeah, I... Maybe he has a little bit of rust to shake off, so I'm going to go with the Cardinals in this one. Now, after that, we have an AFC East matchup between the 2-5 New York Jets and the 1-6 New England Patriots. Uh, honestly, very surprising that these teams are still just a game apart after the Jets completely dismantled the Patriots back in Week 3 in their Thursday night matchup. Uh, the Jets have not won a single game after that, and the Patriots, well, they haven't won a single game since their first one. Now, even though the Jets have been somewhat dysfunctional, going through a lot of turmoil in the last couple weeks, with the firing of head coach Robert Sala and the acquisition of Devontae Adams before getting whooped by the Steelers on Sunday Night Football, they still are in a much better place than the Patriots, who lost to the 1-5 Jacksonville Jaguars last week. And so, even with Drake May looking you know, decently impressive in his first two starts. A lot of mistakes in week one, his first start. And then last week, no mistakes, but the one game was atrocious. I think that the Jets' defense is just too tall of a task. The Patriots haven't necessarily gotten any better since that week. Obviously, yes, the passing game has improved, but the Jets are a hard defense to pass against, and the running game just does not exist at the moment. The Jets... Uh, Offensively, they probably can string together at least three solid enough drives to put the Patriots away. So, unfortunately, I'm going to have to go with the Jets again here. Just seeing how they did against us the last time, and last time I picked the Patriots to win, and that did not go very well for me. So, going with the Jets over the Patriots. After that, we've got a matchup from the NFC South. It is going to be the Atlanta Falcons, who are 4-3, and three, taking on the 4-3 and three Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, a little bit surprising that we're seeing so many rematches already this early into the season. We already saw the Atlanta Falcons-Buccaneers game on Thursday night as well. And last time, the Buccaneers did lose it in overtime. The Falcons had a 500-yard passing game from Kirk Cousins, and they did took it from the Bucks. Now the Bucks, they just lost two of their most key offensive pieces in Chris Godwin and Mike Evans. Mike Evans sidelined for a couple weeks. Chris Godwin unfortunately out for the rest of the year. We may not even see him play another snap as a Buccaneer as he is a free agent at the end of the season. The Falcons on the other hand, yes they are coming off of a loss against Seattle, but Based on what we've seen in the weeks prior and the fact that they did not suffer any major, major injuries, I don't know why I would not go with the Falcons here. They're the more healthy team. They won last time. The Buccaneers, they're severely short-handed after all of these developments. And, yeah, they couldn't they couldn't even pull it out last time. So, I'm, I'm going with the Falcons here. I don't know why. I don't know what 55% of people are saying that I'm not saying. Well, I, I'm landing the Falcons. Next, after that, we have a matchup between the Green Bay Packers and the Jacksonville Jaguars. And, yeah, I'm not going to mince my words.
backwards. I, I've got the Packers here. It is gonna be a nice game for them. I feel like the Packers last week taking on the Houston Texans and really uh, just dismantling C.J. Stroud in the second half. Only allowed him 87 passing yards on the entire game. Now the Jacksonville offense has not been something that is consistently good week in and week out. You do have Ryan Thomas Jr. who has been very impressive for a rookie, but Trevor Lawrence, some days he can pass, some days not as much. The running back game is also iffy. Last week they put up a lot on the Patriots, but the Packers defense last week they did a phenomenal job of limiting C.J. Stroud, who is quite a bit better than Trevor Lawrence, in my opinion. And, yeah, uh, while Joe Mixon did get his fair share, I don't think this backfield committee of Dearness Johnson, Dank Bixby, and uh, Travis Etienne is going to be as fearsome. So, both offensively and defensively, I think that the Packers have an edge in this game, and they're at a... They're at a record of 5-2. and two. The Jaguars, they have not been very good at all this year. I've got to go Packers here. Now, after that, we've got an AFC South matchup between the 4-3 and three Indianapolis Colts and the 5-2 and two Houston Texans. Another rematch, if you recall, this was a game that occurred back in Week 1. Arguably Anthony Richardson's best game. Since then, it has been injuries and poor performances. I don't think I've seen him throw for uh, over 50% completion rate in any game. Maybe I'm wrong, but it has not been the best uh, of starts for him. And the Texans, on the other hand, yes, they've had two losses in which uh, they're concerning. I mean, I guess like two bad losses. One against the Vikings last week wasn't that bad. They only lost by a small amount, but they couldn't do all that much offensively. The Colts defense, on the other hand, though, I don't think that they have done that great of a job. Uh, Joe Mixon, week one, was able to eat a whole, you know, a buffet against them, buffet platter worth of yards and rushes. I think he rushed the ball 30 times for like 150 something yards, and he's back and healthy, so he maybe can do that again. Uh, Richardson still needs more time to develop, and I don't think that the Houston Texans offense, even with the loss of Nico Collins, is going to struggle all that much against this Colts D. So, I'm going with the Texans once again over the Colts. And, yeah. Next up, we have a matchup between the Philadelphia Eagles, who are sitting at a record of 4-2, and two, and the Cincinnati Bengals, crawling their way back to 500 at a record of 3-4. and four. Now, people are somewhat split on this, with 55% of people picking the Eagles and 45% of people picking the Bengals, but uh, let's just go over a couple things. We've got the Eagles last week coming off one of their better games. They weren't able to throw the ball all that well, only throwing for about 140 yards. Um, but A.J. Brown is back, Devontae Smith is back. I think Grant Cal Caltica Cara, I'm not sure what his last name is really, but uh, possibly still filling in for the injured Dallas Goder. Um, even then though, this offense is so much more healthy than it was a couple weeks ago. And then the Bengals, on the other hand, they they're more healthy with uh, the return of, I guess, T. Higgins. Early on, they didn't have T. Higgins. Uh, and now they've got him back. Jamar Chase, Joe Burrow, this group looking somewhat solid in some of these games. But I don't love what I'm seeing from the rushing game. That's honestly the biggest point of emphasis for me. The Eagles, yes, they do have some struggles passing the ball. They do have some struggles with turnovers. They have not been amazing, but we saw how they did against the Packers in week one, uh, what they can do through the air. We've also seen last week how they can get Saquon Barkley 170-something point uh, rushing yards, and they can rush for over 200. So this is an offense that, though they haven't done it, I do think that they can get 300 yards to the air or 200 yards on the ground, and that is extremely explosive. The Bengals, while they can throw it for quite a bit, the Zach Moss, Chase Brown backfield committee has not been impressive in the last two weeks. Especially not last week. Um, not mustering very many yards at all in the ground game. I think when it comes down to it, the Eagles coming off. 
have one of their best performances the Bengals getting a win but not in a notable fashion I don't think that they did all that well against the Browns they could have ideally done better and so I am going with the Eagles in this one I I've just liked how they have been playing recently slightly more um, coming off their bye week they have two straight wins and yeah I, I trust their offense a smidge more but it should be a fun game the Bengals obviously gonna want this game quite badly uh, considering the fact that they can get back to a 4-4 four four record that would be 500 and then maybe they're still in playoff contention Eagles on the other hand they probably are eyeing that Jaden Daniels injury knowing that the Cowboys they're coming off a bye they're coming off a horrible loss if the Eagles can get away to here they could maybe crawl into the lead of the division so both teams with a lot to play for I am giving it the edge to the Eagles though now after that we finally move into our afternoon slate of games in this our first matchup is going to be between the two and five New Orleans Saints and the three and three Los Angeles Chargers uh, the Chargers and Saints both suffering losses this past week the Saints on Thursday night the Chargers on Monday night so something you might want to consider the fact that the Saints are coming off a long week the Chargers a short week but in terms of how they played the Chargers ultimately lost by a margin of two points I believe it was a 15-17 loss and yes they did not score any touchdowns but the Saints they lost pretty horrifically uh, I believe it was like 33-10 to 10 on Thursday night committing some egregious turnovers uh, including like direct points to the other team and the Chargers defense you can see by them only allowing 17 points they're still stout they're still a force to be reckoned with not 100% sure if Derek Carr is in is in the picture for a return this week but if not Spencer Rattler he has been not impressive uh, just not ready to be a quarterback in this league yet giving him his reps but uh, if he's in at quarterback I don't, I don't really see the Saints winning all that much Alvin Kamara also uh, revealed to the public that he's been battling through a broken hand I believe uh, and some other injury so that could explain why the Saints rushing offense has been so much more abysmal in their five straight losses but yeah overall this one of the coldest teams in football the Saints are and the Chargers uh, an upsetting loss on Monday they're gonna be coming back with a vengeance I think that they get the win here over the Saints now after that we've got a fun little matchup between the five and two Buffalo Bills and the four and three Seattle Seahawks uh, both teams coming off a win the Bills taking down the Titans and the Seahawks taking down the Falcons the Seahawks had a a stretch there where they skid quite a bit starting off three and oh then falling to three and three before getting it back in the winning column the bills on the other hand they also started three and oh then suffered two losses but back-to-back -back wins for them and they have uh amari cooper now so that makes their offense nicer the seahawks suffering an injury to their star wideout dk metcalf he is likely sidelined from this game with a mcl sprain i believe it is and so uh yeah i'm gonna have to dock them some points for that uh he was a pretty big part in their victory last week and though they do have talented wideouts in tyler Lockie and jackson jackson smith and chickba i I would ideally want Seattle to be at uh, full strength against a team that is pretty good in the Buffalo Bills. The Bills only allowing 10 points last week is also something to note. Obviously they're not playing that good of an opponent, but their second half adjustments were sharp. And so, yeah, honestly, I want to give the Seahawks more of a chance. Personally, I do think that like if they rally well, and they play like last week where they allow no sacks or only one sack and they don't turn the ball over uh they they could but so far seattle has demonstrated that they're the more turnover worthy offense uh with geno still having six picks this year and josh allen still being interception less uh gotta go with the bills and just they're playing more clean football and they do have an offensive upgrade with Amari Cooper while the Seahawks are downgraded due to injury so I'm gonna go 
all the bills here. After that, we've got a matchup. Ideally, it would have been between the number one and number two pick in this year's draft. Chicago Bears taking on the Washington Commanders. The Bears had a record of 4-2, and two, and the Commanders had a record of 5-2. and two. Uh, And that would have been really cool to watch. Caleb Williams with a rough start, but he has been balling out in these last couple games before their bye week. And then the Commanders on the other hand, Jaden Daniels, started off decent week one and had just been rolling ever since uh, the lead leading candidate for the Offensive Rookie of the Year award. And yeah, unfortunately he is sidelined with a rib injury, didn't practice today. I don't think that he's going to be able to suit up on Sunday. They're Bears. Surprisingly enough, they're coming off of a bye week and people, maybe they're not aware of the Jane Daniels injury, but the Washington Commanders are being picked to win 66% uh, to 34%, so almost double as much as the Bears in this game, and I think that is mistaken. I think that the Bears defense is a lot better than people are giving them credit for. They've allowed over 20 points, uh, I think just once so far this season, and that was against the Colts. They, uh, they scored 21 points in that game, the Colts did, uh, and since then, the offense has been committing a lot less turnovers. They have gotten rolling. DeAndre Swift is looking good. Uh, Caleb Williams has been playing very well, throwing for four touchdowns in one of his games, and uh, even though the Commanders did hang up like 40 points on the Panthers, that was the Panthers. The Panthers defense has not been good this year. If you are truly starting a game with Marcus Mariota in at quarterback over Jaden Daniels against a defense that's as good as the Chicago Bears is, I am not going to give you the advantage. I do think that the Bears, they, they're coming off some rest, had a very nice stretch of games right before this, and the Commanders shorthanded without their new star quarterback. I've got to go with the Chicago Bears winning this game. After that, we have a matchup between the Carolina Panthers and the Denver Broncos. The Panthers had a 1-6 record, while the Broncos are at 4-3. Uh, Panthers losing by a plethora of points against the Washington Commanders, as I just said. And the Broncos, on the other hand, giving the Saints an absolute beatdown. Now, the Panthers, they have announced that... I believe it was Andy Dalton who injured his finger in a car crash. I think he broke his thumb, something like that. And so he will not be able to make the start. Instead, it will be Bryce Young. So instantly downgrade the entire team. Broncos last week, they faced a Spencer Rattler and yeah, absolutely made him look like a fool. Their, their offense is still doing just good enough to, uh, to support their defense. Their defense has been great uh, offense not making that many mistakes. I don't trust Bryce Young in any way, shape, or form. Like, uh, th the guy, Carolina just sucks, honestly. It's not even his fault. We've seen with Baker Mayfield and Sam Darnold what this organization can do to a quarterback. So, I'm not gonna blame Bryce Young completely. Obviously, Anthony Dalton did come in and make this team look a lot better, but I'm sure they are screwing the pooch on his development. And so, with him coming back in, all offense gets downgraded. They are not going to be viable. This is one of the best defenses in the NFL so far this year. I'm definitely going with the Broncos in this one. After that, we have a AFC West matchup between the Kansas City Chiefs and the Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, the Raiders playing Gardner Minshew at quarterback for the next stretch of games with a Nagano uh, put on IR with a fractured finger. Uh, and the Chiefs on the other hand, not playing amazing football, still set at a record of 6-0. Their defense has been elite offensively. Lots of turnovers, but they do go out and get DeAndre Hopkins and that'll be somewhat helpful in their passing game. Mahomes gets some help because, uh, you know, Rishi Rice and Hollywood Brown, they've suffered some big injuries. Isaiah Pacheco still managing to somewhat get by. And this is one of the few offenses that Regardless of how bad Mahomes plays, they likely will outdo him. Like we saw Brock Purdy throw three picks last week. We also saw Gardner Minshew throw three picks last week. So uh, Mahomes' stretch of owning the entire AFC West likely continues. I don't think that he loses to the Raiders in this game. The Chiefs 
Bruins unfortunately will advance to a record of 7-0. and After that, we have the infamous matchup, the one that we see almost each and every year between the Dallas Cowboys and the 49ers. This is going to be our Sunday night game. A lot of history in this game. The 3-3 three and three Cowboys coming out of their bye week. The 3-4 and four 49ers uh, coming off a loss against the Chiefs. Uh, was close at some points, but really by the end it was not. 49ers being quite unimpressive. Uh, but really, you can't blame them. They have been extremely injured with injuries to Christian McCaffrey before the season even started. Uh, George Kittle missed a week. Debo Samuel missed uh, last week with pneumonia. Another week earlier in the season with some other injury. Then Brandon Ayuk out for the year. Juwan Jennings not playing last year with a hamstring injury. Jordan Mason missing a couple snaps. Just like in almost every single way you can think of, they have been uh, struggling. But hope is on the horizon. You've got Debo Samuel saying that uh, he's feeling well, he's out of the hospital with Kyle Shanahan saying that maybe he can play uh, the Cowboys on the other hand. Uh, I think what well, Brandon Cooks and I are, other than that, I'm not aware of any injuries. Just the last time we saw them play, it was getting absolutely manhandled by the Lions. And they have not been especially good this year at a record of 3-3. Three and three. I don't think I'm loved by them. I still have a lot more faith in an injured 49ers group because at the end of the day, they got back Ricky Pearsall. So if Debo Samuel is able to suit up, you still have Debo, George Kittle, Ricky, and Juwan Jennings. That's a solid group. Brock Purdy, yes, making a lot of mistakes last week. Um, but I'm sure they will learn and adjust and uh, game plan to do a better job and honestly the 49ers have just owned the Cowboys in recent years giving them some humiliating uh, playoff losses and so for that reason gonna go with that trend I think that the 49ers are bound to right the ship and still get to the playoffs I have them winning here now after that we have just one Monday night matchup this week. It is going to be against the 2-5 New York Giants against the 5-2 Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, the Giants having a pretty dud of a performance against the Eagles last week. A divisional rival of theirs. Couldn't get much done at all offensively. It was tough because they allowed 8 sacks over the course of the game. Pittsburgh Steelers defense I do think is still quite nice. Um, completely limiting the New York Jets in the second half, and though the Jets are also at a 2-5 record, I think of the Jets in a better light than I do the Giants. The Giants' defense is respectable, for sure, but the Jets' defense, I also think of as better, so they already beat the better New York team on prime time. You get even more time for Russell Wilson to rest up that leg of his. He performed pretty well on his spotlight on Sunday night. Why not? make it back-to-back, uh, -back, complete the New York gauntlet on Monday night, and then we get another loss. Uh, so, gonna go with the Steelers taking down the Giants here. And with that, we've got all of our Week 8 predictions. I will go through them one more time, just for your convenience. On Thursday night, I've got the Minnesota Vikings beating the LA Rams. Sunday morning, I've got the Ravens over the Browns. Lions over the Titans, the Cardinals over the Dolphins, the Jets over the Patriots, the Falcons over the Buccaneers, the Packers over the Jaguars, the Texans over the Colts, and the Eagles over the Bengals. After that, we move into our Sunday afternoon slate, where I have the Chargers defeating the Saints, the Bills defeating the Seahawks, the Bears over the Commanders, the Broncos over the Panthers, and the Chiefs over the Raiders. I don't even think I'm counting. If I'm being honest, my fingers are just doing whatever they feel like. Then Sunday night, I have the 49ers over the Cowboys. And finally, Monday night, I have the Steelers over the Giants. So please let me know in the comments down below what you think about these predictions, who you have winning which games, what you think the biggest upset is going to be this week, what you think is going to be uh, an obvious non-upset that I have fumbled uh, last week. I think it was decent. I went 9-6. and six. Not not too bad. Um, not as good as a couple weeks ago, but I'll take it still more correct than wrong. And yeah, though, some of them, I wasn't wrong by that much. I think like the Monday night game, I'm found with that two-point uh, error 
and then the Texans game, another two-point error. Still very close games. I like my picks. I am feeling decent about these ones as well. And yeah, as always, thank you all for watching. If you enjoy content like this, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll be putting out more videos as the weeks progress. And yeah, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.